Wait, what? Only 33 seconds of two standard logos? And no cutesy transformation that fits the movie's pretentious animated aesthetic? Should I give the movie credit for its relative restraint? Gah, I don't care. I have to send logos. Any logos! Synchronized sunrising seriously supposes several species stir selves simultaneously. All the of the do up most of all. Team up to wail on the f***ing anteaters in this jungle, cause those guys are pussies. Roll crit. God damn it, I said roll credits already. Movie opens up with a two-minute kid-friendly and fun musical number, followed by birds being cruelly kidnapped from their homes. How the f*** did these bird snatchers snatch these birds? Maybe you could get lucky throwing a net and grabbing one, but they were way up in the air, man. This is the strangest Coen Brothers homage I've ever seen. I can't even find the red ice scraper in this scene. Why the hell's Blue in this enormous box by himself? These smugglers aren't just assholes, they're also incredibly inefficient. Hang on, this is a wooden box that snailed shut, but this little girl was able to pry that open with her bare hands? Jesus, Midwesterners are tough as balls. They let her bring her bird to the Spelling Bee Championship, and the final word was cerulean. If I were Ron DeFelice of Newtown, I'd be screaming home field advantage to anyone who would listen. Huh? Oh sure, she's super annoyed by the clock sound, but Blue's noises, which are much more abrasive, are adorable. I don't care how much she loves this bird, that's a f***ing car alarm noise, and that noise can go right to hell. Enjoy the new book! Thanks, Linda. Bookstores. Yes, Mom, I'd love to visit. But who would take care of Blue? Fine, Linda loves her bird and all that jazz, but you're telling me she's never once had him taken care of by someone else? I don't know how old she's supposed to be, but I'm guessing more than I'm capable of finding someone to pet sit for me while I'm away for a few days years old. Here's your hot chocolate, Blue. Along with four cookies, which equals five different items that can poison and most likely kill your bird. Jeez, this class is stronger than the in those tables from game night. Also, how the hell did Tulio find Blue? It's not like he tracked a black market sales record to a collector in a metropolitan area. Linda accidentally on to Blue in the middle of f***ing Minnesota. Yes, I introduced myself and shook my tail feathers counterclockwise, thus deferring to his dominance. I did not get that at all. Blue understands English, but not Bird, even though he was clearly talking to the jokester birds outside the bookstore just a second ago. Of course, that conversation was also in English, so f*** animated movies for making me figure out what exactly the communication barriers are every time. Please, just call me Tulio. I can call you Betty, and Betty, when you call me, you can call me Al. No, 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 no. It's all arranged. You will be with him every step of the way. And instead of calling you with this information, I flew all the way here from Brazil to tell you in person, because that's not weird or stalkery at all. What the hell kind of bookstore is this? I know it's a small town shop, but what respectable business would have their product all akimbo on the shelves? It was very nice of you to stop in and squawk around and throw my bird. Man, foreplay euphemisms in Minnesota are weird. I have quadrated my vector angles. What the hell does Linda make of all this when she sees the book propped up later and all these Christmas lights set up? The poor woman probably thinks her place is haunted by a ghost reader and has probably had to go through years of therapy. I promised I would always look out for you. But what convinced Linda to go to Rio? She flatly refused Tulio's offer, and all we've seen since then is Blue's failed attempt to flop. Considering Linda never travels because she doesn't understand the concept of pet sitting, I'm going to go out on a limb and say she doesn't have a f***ing passport readily available for this jaunt to another hemisphere. Lost, Tulio! <laughs> you got it! <laughs> Come tomorrow night, everyone will be dressed like that. Oh, not me. Costume shadowing. I'm a pop that cage open like a soda can. No one in the front seat of this car notices this. I'm their great big mama bird. You know, I was gonna make a comment that this dude is way over the top, but honestly, have you ever met a bird person? Don't worry. I'm gonna make you look irresistible. Man, way too much of the early part of this movie is based on humans getting extremely excited about bird f***ing. Also, why the hell does Tulio have to do anything to Blue at all? He's shown all gussied up here, but wouldn't his natural form be more enticing? Is this why they're almost extinct? Because they don't want a bird bone? Wow. That was fast. That's also a much better camera angle than they should be getting right now. Like, the birds just fell out of a f***ing tree, but the camera's perfectly positioned at ground level to get this shot. We should probably give them some privacy. What? This asshole's had a massive mating boner this entire movie, but now that it's supposedly going down, he's gonna bail? This is like watching an entire porno, but missing the money shot. I wouldn't expect a pet. To understand. Yeah, but I don't understand how the hell Jewel even knows what a pet is. She's been in the wild or in this aviary her entire life, so domesticity should be as foreign to her as French toast. Hello? So to orchestrate this abduction, Nigel had to get himself to the aviary by faking injury the day before Blue even arrived. But how would he know that Blue was coming in the first place? And once he got there, how did he get word to Fernando to say that the plan needed to go down that night? And exactly right after one of the rare times that Tulio's not in the lab. God damn, I'm more upset about this bullshit break in than anything else in this movie. He held it to my mouth like, like this. <laughs>
Club drugs. That he reminds me of myself when I was that age. And I was not prepared to watch an animated version of City of God. Nigel, alive. Okay, up until now, the movies presuppose that humans and birds could only communicate non-verbally. But suddenly Nigel understands the necessity of keeping Jewel alive, because a Brazilian dude told him that in English? Do I have that wrong? Oh man, I bet Fernando's feeling pretty blue right about now. Too soon? Nice birdie, here you go. If they're that scared of Nigel, why not just put the food on a plate and let him come to it? Ugh. Cannibal. Yeah, what's up with that? There are plenty of ways to show Nigel's a dickhead without getting this dark. And why would they even think about feeding him poultry in the first f***ing place? I had it all. A TV show. Women, too. If Nigel were this famous in Brazil, to where there was a f***ing television show about him, how the hell would Tulio not realize who he was when he came to the aviary? I mean, we're not talking about some rando who just happened upon a cockatoo. This mother is obsessed with birds. I'm a feathery freak with a beak, a bird murderer. Look, I love Flight of the Concords and all their music. But I don't need to see Jermaine Clement's faux rap act in animated avian form. That was disturbing enough when he was the crab in Moana. No one is coming! No kidding. I thought we established that way back in the aviary scene. Not only are these makeshift zip lines conveniently connected for escape, they're pitched perfect for them to slide down and not get stuck in the middle, like Jada Pinkett Smith did in Girls Trip. I can't fly! You couldn't tell me this before now! It didn't matter before now! Actually, that's not true. There have been two other escape attempts where this knowledge would have greatly influenced Jules' plan. There they are! We gotta get let the record show that this begins a chase where two macaws that are chained to each other outrun two grown-ass men. I can show you the town, sparkly, bumpy, convenient. Sure, Nigel hit the one transformer that controls the entirety of the electricity in Rio de Janeiro. Also, it's probably for the best that he ended the game unexpectedly. It's not like anything else exciting happens during a soccer match. You see, who needs flying? Birds. Birds need flying. Jewel would be birdtastic at CinemaSins. Good night, Jewel. Oh yeah, I remember that this has all taken place in the span of one day. Blue and Linda arrived in Rio. They traveled through the middle of the city during a carnival pregame, did an entire intake on the rarest bird on the planet, assumed he immediately and successfully mated with the only other blue macaw, was abducted, escaped, and found their way to this sanctuary. That would have taken a week minimum. Have you seen my bird? If the plan was to show the same flyer to every passerby, why is Linda making this poor bastard carry around all these copies? Seriously, they posted a flyer not only on the same wall, but also right above another flyer. Even if I knew where Blue was, I'd be so annoyed by this overposting that I'd sit on that information. You see scenes like this in movies a lot, and I'm just wondering how this actually occurs. I get sitting down for a second to rest, but how do you let yourself fall asleep in that position? And you're telling me right around Carnival, when an insane amount of people are in Rio, Linda and Tulio weren't robbed while they were sleeping? Do you think I am an idiot? Thing Jesse Eisenberg said to his agent when being offered this script somehow makes it into the script. Once this chain is off, I'm gonna go back to being free in the jungle. Deal? Fine. Deal. Is it possible for two animated animals to not have on-screen chemistry? Because Blue and Jewel most definitely do not. What's going on down there? Apparently antics that will help this movie gross... $484 million! <laughs> everything. Guys, I've told you a thousand times! Manuela Sofia, come on now, listen to me! If this had been the premise of the George Lopez show, I might have watched a few episodes. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, this sequence of a mom and dad toucan getting all horned up in front of their kids has been going on for some time. I can't say that I'm totally not into it, but this is a touch too much. What an adorable monkey! Damn, this movie just downshifted from City of God to Slumdog Millionaire with no warning. Also, the f*** is the point of stealing wallets. Sure, they like shiny stuff to play around with, but they can't actually use anything, right? Are these assholes using the tourists' credit cards for Amazon purchases from the Amazon? Just for the sake of irony? They're really doubling down on making the fact that Blue can't fly an issue, and it's by far the least interesting part of the movie. You flap your right wing, you flap your left wing, and together, you fly! This is the Burning Man version of the Hokey Pokey. And when you feel the rhythm of your heart, it's like samba! But the Scorpions taught me that the rhythm of love is the groove that hits the bone. Maybe that's not relevant here, but the movie made me think about the f***ing Scorpions, so sin that I shall. Clearly Raphael is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Wait. Damn it, movie, I was actually getting ready to praise you for showing restraint on this cliched shot of the Christ the Redeemer statue up until now. But you couldn't keep it in your pants. This is one sin that will not be redeemed. Let's catch a ride to Luis. And I know for sure that this random truck is headed straight for him. Oh! Ah! Oh. I'm gonna chew through my own leg if this doesn't come off soon. Jeez, Jewel hyperbole much? I know the chain is annoying, and occasionally so is Blue. But this is much better than you had before, right? You're on a goddamn adventure! 
baby got beat. Every time that I have convinced myself that this movie is leaps and bounds ahead of the standard animated fare the studio shit out every summer, a line like this comes up to slap me back to reality. Party in Ipanema, baby. I really wish this movie would declare itself on whether or not it's a musical. If a musical were an erection, this would be a quarter chub at best. Oh, cool. Looks like they're finally going to do the bird version of the Matrix dance orgy. I'm not going to play this song for fear of dozens of angry birds attacking me Hitchcock style. But trust me, the only place you'll find dumber lyrics is on a Black Eyed Peas album. This is in your fight, big nose. That's racist. Literally no humans will be present to witness the massive, noisy monkey versus bird fight that's occurring in the middle of a crowded marketplace. <laughs> Stun the jewels. I guess it's a good thing that all these random places where they end up being dropped keeps them going in the direction of Louise. Come on, follow me. You know, I was thinking, between Fernando being an orphan with a conscience, Linda and Tulio finding love, the monkey shenanigans, Nigel's sadism, the smuggler's internal and external dynamic, Louise and his drooling problem, the merry band accompanying the protagonist, the budding romance between Jewel and Blue, and the whole carnival influence. There are too many plot lines in this f***ing movie. The birds were here. Yeah, sure they were, kid. Go to hell, Tulio. What part of this character would telegraph that he'd be such an immediately unbelieving dick? He came all this way to find the birds, man. Super slow-mo of a character making a silly face in an animated kids movie cliche. It's just like riding a snowmobile! Except for the whole balance thing, and the need for a specific size that matches your upper body strength and height, and the manual transmission you control with your foot, and yeah, same thing. Why the is this little still at the scene of the crime? The birds obviously won the fight, and nobody else stuck around. There he goes! That's my boy! Woo! I'm glad the movie finally got back to its central premise of the characters rooting for some foul f***ing. Lou, down here. Just tell her you have beautiful eyes. That's good. Great idea. I guess Raphael is sort of whispering, but Blue is at full volume. So how can Jewel not hear any or all of this? Just tell her how you feel. Jesus Christ, how does Raphael even know this I know he wants to get these two together, but he's really got no background on their relationship, besides the fact that they're chained together. And from my experience, that's not the best way to begin a relationship. You got something against dogs! No, but I have something against animated drool that I didn't realize until just now. Are you sure this is safe? Oh, sure. Despite being described as an adept mechanic, Louise brandishes a welding mask before using a table saw. This is a thing that happens that allows the things of the things to slip out of the other things. In other words, this works. I can't spend my life walking around following you wherever you're going. Hey, it's not my fault you can't fly. And there's the protagonist fight before the climax of the movie cliche that I've been waiting for. Also, these two have known each other less than like 36 hours, right? But sure, let's have contrived romantic conflict because kids totally love that. Every song sounds exactly the same. Tico taco ya ya ya. Tico taco ya ya ya. Pitchfork. You are Juliet to his Romeo. Sure, they both die in the end, but you get my point? I can buy talking birds and scheming monkeys and diabolical cockatoos all day long, but don't try and tell me this indigenous Brazilian toucan knows the narrative outcome of a f***ing Shakespearean tragedy. Going somewhere, pretty bird? I am not saying that the chances of Nigel showing up right at this moment are impossible, but I am saying the chances of showing up at this moment are impossible. Wow, he just happened to get a super rare blue macaw costume. It's like the movie knew they were coming. Of course she's hot now. I mean, earlier in the movie, she had hair clips and glasses and like a sweater. <laughs> this is the spit. It's definitely the spit. Also a clucking good time, eh? Jeez, these stupid puns can suck my cock. God damn, this movie's beautiful. I was gonna give it a sin for the parade security allowing all these animals to roam free in the thick of things, but these shots of Carnival have officially made me go the other way. You gotta shake your douchey. No, we don't shake our douchies in Minnesota. Dancers at the Spearmint Rhino Gentlemen's Club would beg to differ. Just forget them, get the birds. You mean the rarest and most expensive pair of birds on the planet that you've waited to load until the very end for some reason? Blue, blue. This was the first movie script to include the transcribed lyrics from that annoying Eiffel 65 song. The, f the birds that fly don't need to wait for the hatch to open all the way, right? It's already plenty of room. Blue, you're flying! Yeah! And carrying Jewel easily, despite this being shown as impossible earlier in the movie. These birds are roughly the same size. And if anything, Jewel is in much better shape. But she couldn't lift his ass this whole goddamn time. Ah, sudden Tom Cruise. Idiots. Um, what happened to the plane? It was abandoned just offshore, but we're supposed to assume it crashed with no one noticing? Holy shit, did they adopt Fernando? This is more f***ed up than the ending of Face Off. Wait, so we have proof positive that these two did finally copulate, but we don't get to see it on screen? Come on, man, we've been waiting for this moment for the whole movie. I feel like I've been screwed more than Jewel. Wait a minute. This isn't my world. Disappointed! Linda, Linda, 
this could be our last chance. I'll still have sex with you if you want. Put your little hand in mine. Good. Okay. Which leads me to my second rule, the double tap. Lex, it is a pleasure. Ow! Wow, that is a good grip. You should not pick a fight with this person. <laughs> oh, Blue. You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, or dog house in that area. You'll never find him. Markinson's gone. There is no Markinson. I come in peace. And you go in pieces. Maybe you're a penguin, Tim, but Julie's not a penguin. She's a lioness. You did not feel it in here. Thank you for your honesty. Now f off and die. This is in your fight, Big Nose. Don't you call my husband Big Nose? Well, I ask our Big Nose. Lil' King Kong. King Kong ain't got on me!